Hello, my friends. Thank you for joining me today at the Punlo Coffee Table. I'm your host, Kip, and this is going to be a new series, and it's going to be about the love of Christ and and how we can uh, apply that in our lives. So what does it actually mean to live a life centered on and around the love of Christ? Well, we are we're going to explore that over the next few sessions, and we're going to use a book by Adele Calhoun titled Spiritual Disciplines Handbook as kind of our guide in this discussion. This is basically one of the chapters out of this book. Let's go ahead and begin with a prayer. Heavenly Father, thank you so much for this opportunity to share from your word, share how our lives should be focused on on you and the way that you want us to behave, and that is showing your love to the world and I am looking forward to this conversation, and please guide our conversation in a way that is pleasing to you, and I pray that the, the listener hear the lesson that you, you wish them to hear, no matter what it is that I might say, and I pray this in your name, Lord Jesus, amen. Okay, bef- before we get started today, I want to go back to my title slide just for a moment, and this picture was taken by my wife's sister, Joy. Uh, when we started our media ministry, that is, at the Poonlaw Coffee Table, I was looking for a catchy name, and I turned to the creative brains in my household, which are my wife and my sister. So, And they both love coffee. In fact, uh, we took a recent family trip, and when I asked my wife, which hotels she liked because we'd stayed at many hotels as we took this trip and her ranking for the hotels was all based on the quality of the coffee that was available not the rooms not the locations just the coffee so she and joy both start their day and their day with with coffee Uh, they like coffee Uh, okay but i actually don't like coffee i don't drink coffee um but somehow, our media ministry is now called At the Poonlaw Coffee Table. And go go figure, right? It, it's just kind of one of those inside jokes. Anyway, in, in this picture, you see probably what is my favorite Bible. And the reason it's my favorite Bible is because it's a parallel Bible. It's a parallel of the NIV, the King James, the Amplified, and the New American Standard translations. And I just like... I I should say I love. I love seeing the translations side by side uh, while I'm reading. I'm dyslexic, so it kind of works for my my brain. I'm also an engineer, so this uh, analytical approach to reading the Bible is is just something that that I find very pleasing. So, okay, back to our series. Uh, I want to share with you one of the sections out of this book, Spiritual Disciplines Handbook, and the section is titled The Incarnate love of Christ. So what what does that mean? I, God God is love. God loves us as his children. God loves his creation. So no matter how you are or or what you've done, God loves you. And and that's kind of the basis for this section. So incarnate means to embody or to represent something. So as followers of Jesus, we are commanded to love others the way Jesus loves them. And in fact, it comes out of John chapter 15, verse 12. My command is this, love each other as I have loved you. That's John chapter 12, verse, or chapter 15, verse 12 out of the NIV Bible. Now, making God or should say making God's love incarnate means that we are to embody that love to others. I mean, uh, it's showing the love of God to everyone and especially to the people or person they don't like. The, The word Jesus used in his command to us, that's in John chapter 15, was agape. This is agape in Greek, and I will good for you, no matter what the circumstances are. It's, it's this concept that I wish and pray good for those 
around me, and especially for those that I don't like. First uh, uh, Peter uh, chapter 3, verse 9 says it this way. It's like it's not returning evil for evil or insult for insult, but giving a blessing instead. That's showing agape love to people that you don't like. It's loving them in spite of the behavior that they may have or the things that they may have done to you. God is very clear. We are to love others in a way that embodies the love of Christ through our lives, our actions, and our words. And we're going to discuss the different aspects of this throughout this series. And I think I'll, I'll show on the screen just the, the 10 points that the author uses. She talks about encouragement as in bless, blessing others. Care for the earth. This is really caring for God's creation. Compassion. Controlling the tongue, which is our speech. Forgiveness. Humility. Justice. Solidarity, which is really the solidarity in Jesus' sufferings. Stewardship. And honesty, which is telling the truth all the time, every time. Each of these are part of the embodying of the love of Christ to the world. And this list is, is not a complete list by any stretch of the imagination, but you might be able to uh, see others. And I think that's okay, but this is the guidance that we're going to use. And we're going to expand on each one of these points throughout this series. So I want to go ahead and look at the first one on our list, which is encouragement. This is blessing others blessing everyone who God has put into our life. It doesn't matter whether you like them or not. Uh, Adele uses a great structure in her book to keep us focused on each of these points. She defines what the point is. Uh, she gives us a definition. She talks about scriptures that support this perspective, how to put it into practice, and then the fruit that we should see in our lives, in the lives of others, if we are practicing it. So our desire to encourage is, is the first one. And we desire uh, to instill some sort of courage in others. That's encouraging. That's what it means. We desire to instill confidence and hope in others. We desire to do this through expressing the delight that God has in them and for them which is so clearly depicted not only in the Bible, but in creation, and, and we know the character of God. So next we need to define it. Well, encouragement is to bless. It's to encourage others with our speech, the way we speak of them. We are to speak well of them, inspire them with God's words of hope and confidence and delight. And I think delight is one of those unusual words we maybe we don't use often but the author does and it means that God really really cares for us he called his creation good and we are the pinnacle part of that creation so yes we're good God delights in our life and the Psalms talk about this uh, throughout the Bible the Apostle Paul spoke about how important this was to the church in Thessalonica in first Thessalonians chapter 5 Therefore, encourage one another and build up one another, just as you also are doing. That's 1 Thessalonians 5, uh, verse 11 out of the New American Standard. So how do we put this into practice in our lives? Well, prayer. Uh, prayer for and prayer like. Uh, it's, it's like, a, what I mean by this is like placing your hands on someone and praying for them, declaring the words of God to them. It's it's praying for them uh, at home. It is, you are a beloved son and daughter whom God loves. That's, that's out of Mark uh, chapter 1, verse 11. It says, you are my beloved son and daughter whom I love. That's God speaking to us. And I, I can, s well... It can be like speaking or writing scriptures or words out of scriptures uh, for encouragement to someone. Uh, 
It's not quoting verses. It's using the wisdom of the Bible to empower them with the words. It's nurturing them and, and giving them encouragement with the power that, that God has given us through the words in Scripture. So what does encouraging others by embodying Christ look like? You know, what, what should we expect? What are the, what's the fruit? Well, the God-given fruit is when we, we bless others and we build up the body of Christ by being a conduit of God's, God's love, basically. We, we can fill the human hunger for blessing, and we all hunger for blessing. As we spread God's love and delight, the delight of God's people spreads to one another. It's, it's, a, well, it's exponential. When I invest in someone or someone's, they invest in someone's, and then it should propagate. And that's how uh, the love of Christ can be shown to the world through our lives as Christians. Now, many people uh, feel more cursed than blessed. Uh, let's just face it, that's kind of the way our, our world is. They wonder if they matter. Uh, anger leaks out and offense is easily taken. Sadness and depression seem to fill every narrative in our lives, especially in social media, on the TV. People have a hunger for a kind word. We should remember times people have encouraged us and how that made us feel. We should remember times that we did not get the encouragement that we felt like we needed and how that made us feel. These are totally different emotional conditions, all based on the words or lack of words that was spoken to us. And can you remember a time that you encouraged somebody else? I can tell you from my personal experiences that encouraging somebody else is one of the best experiences, one of the best feelings you can have in life. I wish I did it more. I, I, I kind of challenge you to join me in intentionally trying to do this more. I know God will reward us with much joy if we can only do what he's commanded us to do. So bless others. That needs to be one of our, our main focuses if we want to live out the love of Christ. Now, another one is caring for creation. In the book, it talks about caring for the earth. And I want to read a quote from Barbara Brown Taylor. This land that gives us our food, our water, these trees that clean the air for us to breathe, all these green and growing things that bless our bodies with their beauty. These are not mere resources. They are fellow creatures with their own rights and responsibilities before God. They have their own sacred duties to perform, if only we would let them. Now, I may deviate a little bit from their perspective on this, but I think our desire is to honor creation by loving and nurturing and stewarding God's creation. Uh, that's what we are commanded to do in, in Genesis. And next, how do we really define that? What does it look like? It's, it's caring for creation in a way that expresses God's love for his very good creation by actively loving and caring for creation. That, that's the environment. That's plants. That's animals. That's honoring these gifts, these treasures that God's given us in a way that is uh, honorable to God. And I think uh, Romans chapter 8, verse 19 to 21 is, is a good one to reference. And it says, For the creation waits in eager expectation for the children of God to be revealed. For the creation was subjected to frustration, not by its own choice, but by the will of the one who subjected it, in hope that the creation itself will be liberated from its bondage to decay and brought into the freedom and glory of of the children of God. Romans chapter 8 verses 19 to 21 from the NIV Bible. So how do we put this into practice in our lives? Well, protecting the earth's natural resources, working against pollution, uh, treating animals humanely, 
uh, using energy supplies wisely, recycling, not littering. These are all things that we commonly hear, and they're, they're really good stewardship activities. So these are just some of the ways, though, that we can choose to live our lives in a way that show that we care about the creation that God made for us. And what would be the evidence that we are living living this out in a way that shows the love of Christ and it's it's by honoring the creator and celebrating his handiwork that's everything around us it's how we take care of our yard uh, our beautiful home uh, with its flowers and and plants witnessing to others about godly stewardship of the environment and its resources and we should always act like we know God owns everything it doesn't belong to us acting like the creator of the world owns it and and not us humans Uh, that's really important and our world is a gift from god how we use it matters to god and so it should matter to us so i think it's a good place for us to stop today let me go ahead and close with a prayer heavenly father thank you so much for these lessons from your word the bible help us to show the world the love of Christ through our lives and and the way we live our lives. Help us to show that to others, share it with others, and help others to learn how to behave the way you would wish them to behave. And I pray this in your name, Lord Jesus. Amen. Okay, let me leave you with this today before we sign off. What we do and say matters to God. Jesus commanded us to love others the way he loves them not the way we love or want to be loved that is not the standard it's the way jesus wants things to be loved as a follower of jesus our lives should reflect christ our lives should be the embodiment of the love of christ to this lost and broken world that we are living in So I want to thank you for joining me today at the Punlo Coffee Table, and I hope you'll join me for the rest of this series. If you like the message, please share a link with one of your friends. So until next time from the Punlo Coffee Table, God bless.